Sponsored by the Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bone Show. We're so pleased to be on location in the studio of an incredible artist who not only does paintings on canvas, but also works on guitar cases, straps, and even guitar amplifiers, James A. Willis. James, what motivated you to become an artist? Well, I remember when I was a little bitty kid, like maybe, I mean, I was little. I maybe was five. But I was over, mom had me over to a friend's house, her friend, and to distract me, they had given me crayons. And I'm sitting there and I'm coloring with a yellow crayon and I picked up a blue and when the blue went over the yellow and it turned green, it rocked my world. So that is when you would consider that you became a professional artist? You know, I'm not sure I'm a professional artist now. I make a lot of stuff and it leaves and people sometimes grace me with the exchange of currency for that. But yeah, I'm not really doing anything that I wouldn't be doing if the money dried up. How did you first meet James, and what was your impression when you first stepped into his studio? I was introduced to James, it might have been a year now, maybe almost a year ago, by, uh, by Boo Ray, who I'd been playing out with for a bit, and um, he just thought that we should meet, and took me over to his little studio. There's just a million things you can look at, and like you still won't be able to see everything in there. It's just, there's just stuff everywhere, and it's awesome. He invited me and the studio guys to come check out his magical little uh, world, and, uh, and we made immediate friends. It was really a sweet time. I think it's like sensory overload, because when you walk in there, if you can get away from talking to James and just scan the room and just look around, you see art everywhere. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there's fine art on a doorknob there. I mean, it's just like everywhere you look, there's something really cool. How passionate are you with your art? If you locked me in a room and, you know, gave me some water, I would definitely, you know, use my finger and do water paintings on the floor. That's all I, yeah, it's, it's, it's all I want to do is make stuff. You were brought to Nashville as the first artist in residence for Gibson Guitars. What year was that? I think it was in 2012. Certainly wasn't the first artist at Gibson, but it was just the tag that they put on it, the artist in residence, because, you know, I didn't want a, a job, but I did want to stay. Gibson reached out to a friend of mine, Rudy Penza, and they were looking for somebody to paint, a new, do a New York City guitar. And uh, they asked me if I would paint one of my paintings on the guitar. I said, no, but I'll customize the guitar and include a painting. How did painting guitar cases start for you? I'd taken a couple of cases that were painted down to Christy Carter and I'd painted an actual saint on a guitar case. And I, and I, and I said to her, well, you know, I've kind of been thinking about painting a country music star as like a saint on a guitar case. So I'm, I'm gonna paint you one of these and I'll bring it down. And uh, very shortly after that, um, <clears throat> she reached out to me and, and she said, hey, hey, you know, this guy Zach Brown wants 12 of those. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not doing 12 of those things. I was working at Zach Brown's recording studio, Southern Ground Nashville, and we um, just randomly would receive packages at the studio. Zach would buy art or furniture or whatever, and it would just show up with no um, notice. How did it feel being the center of the music video for Same Boat by Zach Brown Band? Yeah, I just got a call from, from somebody, you know, and they said, hey, you know, Zach said you could build a ship. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> and I guess I had mentioned to Zach about, you know, for their song, Same Boat, you know, oh, do it on a vaudeville stage and, and have a boat rocking and have the old timey waves. And, and I was like, you know what? I don't think I'm the right guy for that. And, 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 and she, you know, the person on the phone was like, no, small. And she's like, we're, we're gonna film you while you're making it. You can't build a mini stage set like in a day. And so the idea came up was I built it in parts so that I could make it look like I was building it, but really I was just putting together something that I'd built. And then when it came out, like the thing I built was on there for like two seconds and it was just all me walking around and doing goofy stuff, so yeah. You're friends with the Wood Brothers band and they asked you to do something special for them as well. Oliver called me one day and he's like, hey man, I got this new, we got this new song, you know, we want to give it a listen. 
And so I listened to it. And I'm, yeah, you know, it's, it's awesome, man. You know. And he's like, "What would you do for the video?" And I'm like, "Oh, well, I mean, you got to tell the story. It's a story." But you know, use puppets or animation or something because otherwise it might seem hokey. So yeah, with, you know, a few days later, Oliver called me and he's like, "You're hired." And I'm like, Dude, "I don't, I don't know, how to, I don't know how to make puppets." And I got a hold of a of, of, a friend and we built a miniature version of somebody's kitchen. And then we filmed the Wood Brothers singing in that kitchen, and it would cut from the kitchen over to the little tiny kitchen where the puppets puppets were working. You're a multimedia artist who's not restricted to only canvas. What led you to working on guitar straps, motorcycle seats, and even carving on guitar amplifiers? The whole time I was in those studios in New York, you know, we were working on video, we were working with photography, we were working on animation, we were working on all this stuff. And, and so when I jumped back over into painting, I had this weird set of tools. And so like the leather, for instance, um, uh, I was working on a custom motorcycle and I wanted a cool leather seat. And I could not find anything that I liked and I didn't want to put somebody else's art on it, on my thing. And so I'm like, well, how hard can it be? I think I was able to kind of find something on the internet, but it was different, you know, back then. And, uh, and I saw that they were wetting the leather and hitting it. And so um, I took a big old pair of shears and I cut the end off of a screwdriver and I took a hammer and I, I said, oh yeah, there you go. And that's how the leather started. I didn't do guitar straps or any of that stuff until Nashville. So it was all motorcycle related back then. He's made me a really cool guitar strap. He was trying to ask me like, what do you want it to look like? And like, I don't know. <laughs> um, I think I sent him like some vintage like concert posters from like the 60s, like, like the Woodstock poster and all that. But really I was like, just do your thing with it. And so, when he gave it to me, I, I hadn't seen it before. I hadn't seen like any rough drafts or anything like that. And it's just perfect. I have uh, this belt that he made. It's, uh, it's actually uh, on that first tour of his studio. I saw it, it caught my eye and, and I, had to, I had to have it for my very own. To all the people that work with leather and tool leather, I apologize for what, and because I do not do it the right way. I do it my way. And it's same with carving. You know, I, anybody that carves beautifully carved things like Bruce Kunkel, who was at Gibson, the guy's like a master. I'm never going to be there, but I'm also not trying to be there. So, yeah, that's where the carving started with me, with guitars, and then it went to carving on any piece of wood that wasn't moving. And, uh, yeah. And that's the way it goes. But you, you never know which one of those things is going to turn into something. So as an artist, if you feel like you have an urge to try to learn how to do something, you should try to learn how to do it and then just put it in your toolbox. Has working in those different forms now liberated you to work in other mediums, such as when you do guitar cases for a few months and then go to guitar straps and amplifiers and then back to canvas? It is tricky to manage it sometimes because it is it's not good if I try to start to mix those things because it's a, a very different head for each one. So I kind of try to balance it so that I do things in chunks. I'm a little afraid to start painting on canvas again because I think it might shut everything else down. If you see a post on my Instagram account that says, look, I'm painting on canvas again, you might as well go like, well, I missed my chance at getting a guitar case because he's done. He did actually uh, pull an April Fool's on me this year. Uh, I had a project coming up that I that I've, uh, got two guitars that we got signed by Clint Eastwood that have uh, Clint's face painted on it. And uh, James going to be, or I was asking James to do a case for these for me. And uh, and he called me up and he's like, man, I'm sorry to tell you, I'm quitting doing cases. And I just felt my insides de just deflate when he, when he told me that. What is the next big art challenge that you see yourself tackling? Everything I do is my next big challenge. I, I, I try to think of every piece of art I make as the thing that I'm gonna die right after I finish it. When I think of my art, I think of it starting from that yellow, blue crayon mix. And it's just a 
big old crazy line all the way to here. It's not a bunch of different things, it's just one big old crazy pile of stuff. What is your favorite James A. Willis art piece? My favorite piece of James's work is the spooky, sweet guitar and case. It's uh, skeletons with little hearts and, um, and I'm, a, I'm a big fan of, of both of those things. <laughs> and, um, and to put skeletons and love together is, is, uh, is, is pretty sweet, I think. For me personally, it would be the, the Waylon Jennings project that we did together. Mm -hmm. um, that case, it completely blew my mind when I, when I saw it. What do you feel is your legacy? Oddly enough, the music thing brings together all of the things I've done. And I've done so much of it at this point. When I first came here and started doing it, I thought, oh man, you know, it's like, I don't even know how to tell somebody what I do. How is anybody going to tell somebody else what I did? You know, you're going to pick a, what are you going to say? But now I think that, that the, you know, I've been here 11 years and I've done so many guitars and so many cases and so many amps and music videos. And, and I think maybe that that as a thing is going to seem like something. What makes James artwork unique? You can really pick out his style. It's got a different feel to it. You can tell just by looking at it that it was made from James. Like there's like a distinct style to it, I feel like. When you see it firsthand, um, you realize what level of an artist he is. There's a two year wait for the artwork that you create and deliver. James, what does that feel like to be in that kind of demand? No different. It doesn't feel any different. I don't think about it any differently. Yeah, because I wasn't doing it for any other reason than to make the stuff. So I feel the same fear, am I good enough, you know, um, that I did when nobody was buying it. So it doesn't really feel that much different. Why do you feel art and music meld together so well? So now that it's clearly about music, I wonder if it hadn't always been about music, and I just didn't know it. It's like motorcycles in a motorcycle shop it means way more to me than motorcycles in, you know, some place that nobody knows anything about motorcycles, you know. So, like a guitar in the Country Music Hall of Fame would be like home. A guitar in some sort of, you know, fancy art museum would just be novel. What message do you hope that your artwork will convey to those that are fortunate enough to experience it firsthand? I just wanted to speak to them, you know. I'm, all a painting is, or all a drawing is, is it, a re real physical drawings and paintings are, are kind of just solidified thoughts. And if you can ever kind of get that and you're working with an artist that you like, you're, you're always going to be a few feet away from my actual thought, you know. And, and so I just hope that it speaks to them, you know, and they like it. If they wound up with it, they must like it. So that's good, you know. And so, yeah, that's all I want. Somebody, somebody once said to me back in the day, you know, you know, you know, if they were doing some political thing or something, you know. I was like, yeah, man, I'm, it's just not where I'm at, you know. I think if I wanted to affect the way people thought, I'd have to be making films or music. So I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to reflect something back, you know. I'm just making things that are things that exist for no other reason than to be the thing. James, thanks for joining us on the show. We want to make sure that viewers have the opportunity to go to your website and also to your social media so that possibly they can order some of their own artwork and definitely see the great artwork that you've already created. Sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bones show.